Hello, I'm James Dilley, experimental archaeologist and flint napper. For this video, I'll introduce the Lavalois prepared core technology and show you a little bit about the skill of Neanderthal tool makers. By way of introduction, what is Lavalois prepared core technology? It's often briefly outlined as a mode for making stone flakes of a predetermined shape and size from a prepared core. That means that rather than striking off random flakes from another stone, time and effort is invested into carefully shaping a core. And from that core, a flake or two is detached of a preconceived, pre-thought shape and size so that there's a level of uniformity. Le Valois technology is named after the suburb of Paris, Le Valois Pere, where quarrying for sand led to the discovery of flint tools in the 1850s. It wasn't until 1967 when they were first described in a publication called Silex Tai, which means napped flints. As I'm sure you'll be unsurprised to know, the tools from Le Valois Pere are not the earliest examples. The origins of Lavalois remain a little obscured, but are hotly debated, though at some sites a transition has been identified to provide clues. At the Kapthur Formation in Kenya, a transition from late Lower Paleolithic Acheulean hand axes to cores has been observed. It is here we see some of the earliest evidence of possible Lavalois technology identified at around half a million years ago, or even earlier. However, many researchers feel the search for an origin point of Lavalois is meaningless. This Acheulean biface to Lavalois core transition has been observed at other sites in Africa, the Levant and Europe. A wave of technological spread across continents is unlikely due to regional differences in Lavalois development. This instead suggests sporadic appearances. At the rock shelter site of Onyak 3 Avon in the Rhone Valley, another transition has been identified. Here, the lower level contained flakes that had been detached from continuous discoidal cores on both faces. However, from the middle sequence onwards, at approximately 350,000 years BP, flakes were detached preferentially from one dedicated striking platform, which, as Dr Becky Scott notes in her book Becoming Neanderthals, is essentially Lavalois flaking, and with the upper sequence dominated by Lavalois flaking of cores, the site represents an entirely locally evolved Lavalois technology. So why did Lavalois appear? As with much of prehistoric technology, I like to try and consider some of the external factors that might have encouraged technological change. But instead of simply needing sharper tools or a faster way of making tools over something like a hand axe, what was the need for technological change? Could something like climate or social changes have been stronger factors in the development of stone tools? almost definitely, but proving it archaeologically is difficult. Some researchers have attributed the appearance of Lavalois technology to changes in economising behaviours and more mobile strategies related to raw material conservation. What that appears to show is a need for stone tools that are suitable to more mobile groups that might not always have access to good quality stone. So what were the products of the Lavalois? Unlike the bifacially worked hand axes of the Acheulean, Lavalois is flake dominated. Often the flakes were retouched, but specific flake types came from certain stages or styles in Lavalois core preparation. The classic product from Lavalois technology was the preferential flake. These flakes could have been used or turned into cutting tools, scrapers, points for spears, notches or denticulates. 
but now I'm going to try and talk you through how some of the Lavalois flakes are actually classified by archaeologists. A preferential flake is the first main removal. It's the preferred aim of the Napa. A preferential flake can be centripetal, which means the core was worked from around the outside and the flakes travelled into the middle across the face of the core. This often results in the classic tortoise core form. The preferential flakes can be unidirectional, which means that the core would have been worked from one end or platform. And this could result in a Lavalois point, which could go on a spear. The flake could also be bi-directional, which means the core is typically worked from two ends and usually two opposing ends. You can actually get flakes that come after the preferential removal. Now those would be known as recurrent. So if those following recurrent flakes have come from one edge, they would be recurrent unidirectional. But if the flakes, the following recurrent flakes have come from two different angles or platforms, they would be recurrent bidirectional. And if those follow-up recurrent flakes have come from around the core, they would be recurrent centripetal. To confuse things further, the preparation of the main face or the dorsal face of the core can also be classified. If those preparation flakes are targeted to one point of the core other than the middle, they could be classed as convergent. So in the preparation of a Lavalois point removal, it could be classed as convergent unidirectional because it's those converging flakes and their scars that provide that triangular shape for the Lavalois point. If the flakes are traveling across the surface of the core in one direction, they could be classed as parallel unidirectional or parallel bidirectional if those removal flakes that run next to each other are detached from two opposing platforms. Confused? Me too. Variations within Lavalois production and tool styles have led to characterised technologies. These are often regionally specific, such as Nubian Lavalois technology, which includes points with divergent bidirectional removals, resulting in a distinctive flake scar pattern on the surface of the flake and an elongated point tip. Archaeologists love to classify things. It provides a sense of order in a prehistoric world that is anything but orderly. Classifications often change as new evidence is found or a new model is created to better understand these objects. So can we classify Lavalois as an exclusively Neanderthal technology? Absolutely not. It wasn't Neanderthals who shifted from hand axes to Lavalois at the Kapthurin formation over 300,000 years ago. And much later, after the time of Neanderthals, Lavalois technology was used in a variety of forms in many regions around the world during the Neolithic. So what makes Lavalois so great? It's a fair bit of work and waste to make a few preferred flakes. Well, we've already addressed one of those benefits, producing flakes with a level of uniformity. So long as the core is prepared properly and the raw material is dependable in quality, you will end up with a selection of recognisable flakes which are useful for certain tasks. Another benefit is the edge angle of Lavalois flakes. Blades produced via a laminar core tend to have a more obtuse edge angle. Lavalois flakes, whose edge angles are more acute, are therefore typically sharper. Flakes that were sharper and made in a more uniform method that suited a more mobile lifestyle sounds like a fairly good way of making stone tools to me. Perhaps it's no wonder that Lavalois continued after Neanderthals disappeared. Would it have appeared if Neanderthals never existed? Almost definitely, and it appeared in regions that Neanderthals never set foot 
based on current evidence. However, what we can say is that where Neanderthals made and used Levallois, they certainly mastered it. <laughs>